king is set to move forward with plans to evict his own brother, Prince Andrew, from his Windsor mansion by the end of the year. This after the release of those Epstein files uh, early late last week and over the weekend. Joining me now to discuss this is Rafe Hadel Manku. He's a royal commentator and he's a senior fellow at the New Culture Forum. Uh, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Nice to be with you again. Yeah, great. Thanks uh, for joining us. Well, I mean, we waited with bated breath for those Epstein files. We didn't really get much new in them in terms of uh, Prince Andrew, but seeing sort of, you know, affidavits and sworn testimony of accusations against him uh, from two women, you know, is, is very different, isn't it, from just someone giving an interview and you see these in court documents. And it just raised its ugly head again. His name was all over those files. Loads of questions. Questions have been raised about, you know, why did the police not properly investigate? Why don't they now that Republic, uh, the uh, anti-monarchy group, have, have called on the police to uh, formally investigate? Um, but certainly this has really given up all chance for Prince Andrew to come back into the cold uh, after him being sort of thrown out of public life because of these accusations by Virginia Giuffre that she, she was forced to buy Epstein to have sex with him on three occasions. He's always denied it, paid off a huge sum of money to her to settle a lawsuit, but um, now he may well lose his home, the Royal Lodge. Should he? Well, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, the, the point is, well, we have to, of course, recognise first and foremost that the prince is innocent until proven guilty. Even the guilty are innocent until proven guilty. Um, and so we can't, of course, assume that, expect that there's going to be uh, any severe repercussions on that level. But in the court of public opinion, he's found guilty at the very least of uh, disgracing himself by his decision to uh, continue to associate with a convicted sex offender. And uh, we know that his public poll rating is around 8%. He's the, by far the least popular uh, royal. Can I just and say, I'm amazed, what, I'm amazed that there are people who still support him. That's, <laughs> I mean, wow, where have they been for the last few years? But, you know, the, monarchy's, the monarchy rests upon public support. And bringing the monarchy into disrepute is simply the one thing that no, a member of the royal family can't do. And yeah. it's the interests of the monarchy that are the priority, far more important than any individual member of the royal family. So I think it's necessary for the Duke of York to show some contrition and to willingly vacate Royal Lodge, because thus far, he's made no attempt, really, to show the public that he has actually learned from his lessons. Mm. We were told he was going to reach out and start working for charities and in sex offence cases, trying to do stuff to help those victims of, of sexual abuse. Nothing has happened on that level. Funny that. So this would be one way to do it. Now, of course, the Duke of York has spent something of over £5 million restoring Royal Lodge. He's got a cast iron lease that goes into the 2070s. So he's on firm footing on that level for staying there. And you can see why he'd want to stay there, given the investment. But of course, it's the king who pays for his security, around £3 million a year. That was a deal that, he did, uh, that the king did with him uh, over a year ago now. And if the king withdraws that, then it's not clear that Prince Andrew will have the resources to stay there. Um, that's good news for uh, the Prince of Princess of Wales, because they're now staying at Adelaide Cottage, a four-bedroom cottage. They really need more space, and they're desperate to move into Royal Lodge, which has ten bedrooms. Um, and I, I mean, think how, I mean, would, how do... would they get by without that? I mean, OK, they do have three children. I mean, this is the thing. When we talk about... I, mean, I remember we were doing, you know, Harry and Meghan when they were in Frogmore Cottage. You know, three houses knocked into one. Even where um, William and Kate are now is, is pretty huge. But, I mean, yeah, you see, Royal Lodge, I mean, you know, it's a huge big country mansion is what it is. And this is bearing in mind, this is just their, you know, their country home. They also have homes in London as well. I mean, I just don't know how they cope. Well, you have to remember, yeah, that's true, but you have to remember they are now the heir to the throne. As Prince of Wales, the staff still, still have to be accommodated in some capacity, not in the property, but offices and so forth when they're not yeah. working in London. Uh, and so it, it just makes sense that a family should go into Royal Lodge rather than a, a single man who needs a very lonely existence now. I mean, he doesn't have many friends coming over. If ever there was a salutary lesson in the old adage, be kind to people on the way up, because you may meet them on the way down. It's certainly the Duke of York, who hasn't necessarily 
uh, been the kindest person to those people who have come no. into his circle over the years. By, by all um, accounts, he's a pompous, very rude ass. I mean, I mean ass, a double -S. I'm allowed to say that on, uh, on telly. But by all accounts, I've never met anyone who thought anything any different um, and was basically, you know, loving, swanning around, pretending to be this sort of trade envoy, but basically just, you know, hanging out with his, you know, with his 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 rich mates in various different countries. There's big question marks about some of his dealings. I tell you what I always found fascinating, though, and, and I rather admire this in lots of ways, is his relationship uh, with Fergie, the, the former Duchess of York, the mother of his two children, Beatrice and Eugenie. Um, she, they've, they've stayed thick as thieves, friends throughout, very good for the good for the kids. Let's talk about them possibly remarrying. Um, is that on the cards at all, or is that just tabloid fodder? Well, I'm always reticent to comment on any of these rumours because you, re you know you read one story one day, and the next uh, week we have been hear another story. Um, I look, I, I don't think marriage is the first priority on either of their okay. cards at this moment. Making I mean, money. look, it may, you know, it may well have been something they were contemplating last year because, of course, you know, things were thawing down. We saw we saw the Sarah, the Duchess of York, being invited to spend Christmas for the first time. In 32 years, we saw that we saw the Duke of York, you know, walking that down with Sandringham to, to, to Mass, uh, really showing that things were thawing off. Fast forward two weeks, and he's as out in the cold again, as you said earlier. So it's a very different uh, situation now to just two weeks ago. And you know, the Prince Andrew must be wondering, will he ever be able to escape the clutches of this story? Because no, it ain't over no, just with the no, Epstein files. Enough, we also people... have People well, don't think that coming. someone should be able to escape the fact that they hung out with a... He was... It wasn't like he... It wasn't like, oh, I didn't know that Epstein was a convicted paedophile he, uh, and, and, and sex trafficker. He'd already been convicted. He went and stayed in his home and he sort of excused that. And then you said, oh, he was just such a good friend and, and, and had, was a man of honour. I mean, he doesn't get it. I don't think he's done... thinks he's done anything wrong. And let's face it, there isn't a single sensible person in this country who thinks that someone pays out you know, around 10, 8, 10, well, we know exactly the figure, 8, 10 million quid to a woman you've apparently never met who's accused you of, uh, of having sex with her. Well, and let's also remember that Netflix are actually making a film out of that uh, infamous Newsnight yeah. interview he did with Emily Maitlis, which involved, of course, tales of not sweating and visiting a pizza restaurant in Woking. So the idea that uh, this is all going to eventually you know, return to the dust, I think, is for the birds yeah, because yeah. there's a lot more of this story still to roll out. So the Duke of York may be in for an even worse annus horribilis than 2023. Indeed, indeed. I bet, uh, I bet he's uh, relieved that you know, he's always the favourite son, that the Queen won't be around to see it. Really good to talk to you, Rafe Hadel Mankey. Thank you so much, Royal Commentator, Senior Fellow at the New Cultural Forum. Great to you join us. Sam Armstrong, final word to you in, in the studio. Um, look, you know, there's calls for the FBI to release the CCTV that Epstein had in his mansion. Basically, there was a camera in every, you know, in every corner of everything. They, that's very, very well verified. And also, so this call from Republic, the anti-monarchy group, uh, that uh, the Met Police properly investigate uh, Prince Andrew's allegations and the fact that he would have had security detail with him at all times. What did they see and, and are they talking? Yeah, if I was Prince Andrew, I would, I think, recognise that me continuing to live in this massive country pad uh, that's part of the royal estate, it's seen as sort of state property, is continuing to upset and offend people, and I'd be moving into smaller, frankly, more appropriate accommodation. He doesn't think he's done anything wrong. I mean, my thing is even the, the, even the friendship with uh, Epstein was wrong. And everyone who was around him knew exactly what was going on. Yeah, but by the way, just on that, he is far from alone in having friendships. Oh, with far from, Jeffrey indeed. Epstein. I go, there's more to go on this story.